you are the people who create present and the future of Europe, post-crisis Europe. You should create green future for next generation. Our, your efforts is decisive. It's obvious that we, we need to see a sustainable economic growth, and that means a growth which is compatible uh, with uh, our environment. And uh, that means essentially that we need greater investment uh, and at the same time uh, a reduction in uh, CO2 uh, emissions. Photovoltaics for the first time is the leading renewable technology coming just after gas. So gas is the first uh, technology with the newly added installed capacity in Europe and then photovoltaic comes with 13.3% uh, uh, sorry gigawatt installed capacity. So this is a tremendous um, progress compared to the previous years. So what we do as PV Cycle, we organize the take back and the recycling of these end of life PV modules in Europe and the EFTA countries. We implement thereof the uh, producer's responsibility and we also commit ourselves in a, an environmental agreement uh, to do so with, for instance, clear objectives uh, of, uh, for instance, 85% recycling by 2015. We will see in future the three main applications for solar thermal heat, which is solar cooling, not only in the south of Europe, which is industrial application, any kind of hot water and steam used in, in, in industries, and that's a lot. And may I remind you, 50% of all energy consumed in, the, in, the, uh, in Europe is for heat. And solar desalination means making drinking water from seawater. Today, the European industry is a world leader. Why? First, obviously, has been the support by the union and also the R&D done by companies. The second one, obviously, has been a good law in one of the countries where this uh, uh, technology has been a success story. It's try and help the PVV sector to create a reliable platform for the development. We don't care if feed-in tariffs disappear, but what we would like to do is develop PV plants in a way that we can know in advance which feed-in tariff will apply and that we can know it at the beginning of a PV plant development and not at the very end. My feeling in the R&D sector coming from European sources we do have a lot of money, we do have access to many, many different sources of R&D money. Unfortunately, it is too complex. And this, I allow myself to say it, we don't find too many solar experts in Ireland. We don't find too many solar uh, companies in Cyprus or in France. I hope that uh, if you would uh, remember one thing at the end of the day and then at uh, the end of this short presentation, it's that uh, as uh, Werner has already uh, said and that I think we say every two uh, sentences that we use as a, an industry association, that heat is half of the CO2 problem, it's half of the energy problem and it's half of the renewable solution. We don't have the manufacturing industry and you have to ask a question whether we should have it, whether it's too late to have it and how important it really is um, to have all the pillars, the scientific development, the manufacturing and the market demand in one geography because I believe it's really, really hard to keep the lead um, if you don't have all three. So yes, we are still in the lead on science today, but if we would stop deployment and we would not have a manufacturing industry, we will also not stay in the lead on the science side. Um, the EU should continue supporting young and innovative technologies. CPV exists maybe about five years in the form that it has right now. We don't have a 15 to 20 year track record as silicon and other technologies. Um, intensify development uh, programs for uh, the developing countries and in particular uh, support with financing. 
uh, financing of projects, not just large projects, but also small projects, one megawatt, five megawatts, 20 megawatts, et cetera, sh uh, should also be a priority. Something that I want to address in this, in this setting, which means uh, the connection. Uh, it's good to have production somewhere, it's good to have cons consumers somewhere, but in terms of the connection, the only connection that is uh, operational is the one between, we talk about North Africa and, and Europe, the one uh, between uh, Morocco, Morocco and Spain. So I think some of the other speakers touched already upon it. Uh, it's very important, you know, to have this uh, super grid or whatever you name it uh, in order to transport this, this uh, energy uh, across the continents. The sustainable use in real life of solar energy converting systems requires support of informed and convinced citizens. There are some European programs. However, high efficiency and the real results in education in re on renewables and in particular in development market penetration and use of uh, solar energy as well as in recycling. And here I am happy that all already companies on recycling were presented because this will be our future and our problem uh, of spent uh, energy with batteries requires more active participation of industry. Uh, the problem is that in Europe we would have the possibilities to have started on photovoltaic much earlier, but we didn't, and there are many reasons for that. And I wonder to what extent, and you discussed it already, um, the decision of the German government to step out of nuclear power might accelerate things, accelerate also new models of financing, um, solar and photovoltaic in general. So if we can actually begin to put together capital, and if we can put together regulation, and if we can put that together with innovation, then Europe should have an opportunity to advance very quickly and to make the changes which I believe need to happen quickly. If we're going to do that, then that will require investment in new technologies. It will require the European Union budget to be looked at with its own kind of new energy. We expect um, across Europe uh, um, a trend by the end of uh, this decade of uh, uh, closer grid parity. And in some regions, like for example, southern Italy, grid parity is expected also uh, even before, by, by uh, 2017. Which basically the key message is that that will lay the basis for a much, grower, uh, much higher growth uh, post-2020. And this is really the key message to take back. I think uh, the, the NER 300 program is, as I said at the beginning, a good example. It's a major funding program that will help to demonstrate that ideas actually can work at commercial scale in the form of demonstration projects. It's a European approach that will ensure a high um, um, quality of the demonstration projects with a geographical balance. Um, and uh, to conclude on, again, what the first speaker said, I think it can serve as an example also when we think about future mechanisms and how to fund low carbon technologies. And The energy uh, is a very complex policy jigsaw where uh, a number of uh, aspects have to, take a play, uh, to, to be taken into account uh, to be successful. And my predecessor here have, uh, have uh, very brilliantly let's say, exposed the, a number of conditions that are necessary for innovation to happen. Yeah.